The transformation from an inward-looking state to a global superpower has seen China seek to extend its influence in multiple areas, such as the Arctic, Western Europe, and increasingly in Africa. Africa provides a natural market for growing Chinese arms exports and many other business and political interests. One of Beijing's biggest client states in Africa is Sudan. Its role as an external power backer has thus been extremely useful for the regime. China has come to dominate Sudan's oil sector and takes 50 to 60 percent of the country's oil exports. However, Beijing's cozy relationship with the previous Sudanese strongman Bashir al-Omar was overturned by a coup d'etat in April 2019. The partition of the south of the country into the new state of South Sudan in 2011 also raises extra complications, given that the vast majority of Sudan's oil resources fell into this new territory, the third largest oil reserves in Africa. Meanwhile, older former colonial power France still maintains strong ties to sub-Saharan Africa under the auspices of Operation Serval and then Barkhane to assist former colonies of Burkina Faso, Chad, Mali, Mauritania, and Niger against Islamic insurgency across the region. The selection of Indijima as the HQ clearly shows that Paris still views Chad as a key ally and would assist in any hostilities, especially given its key role in supporting counterinsurgency operations across the wider Sahel region. Over 100 years ago, the original Scramble for Africa provided a foretaste of bigger international schisms and cemented the perception of Kaiser's Germany as an expansionist rising power in London and Paris. Germany's Weltpolitik, adopted in 1890, combined aggressive diplomacy, the acquisition of overseas colonies, and the development of a large navy. And although colonies would not be the word we use today, this strategy has echoes now that Beijing is flexing its muscles on the world stage. Is history set to repeat itself?